Welcome everyone to Deliciously Michigan. My name is Lois Jackman and I'm the Manager of Cultural Programming at the Lorenzo Cultural Center at Macomb Community College. And it's my pleasure to welcome you here today on this lovely Friday afternoon to um, one of our Deliciously Michigan programs, which is coming to you from Vince and Joe's Gourmet Market. This is gonna be a really special presentation. I are gonna have fun with this one. And um, before we get started, I have a few housekeeping um, items to do. Uh, please, everybody check and make sure that your camera and your microphone are off. I see a few cameras on and it's a distraction. So if you can turn those cameras and microphones off, we would appreciate it. And um, if you um, want to change the view, they're gonna be sharing a PowerPoint presentation. So you should be able to see their screen. And I would also like to just thank everyone for attending today. And thank you so much to our sponsors. First State Bank, the Kresge Foundation, Vince and Joe's Gourmet Market, who is presenting today, the Sonia K. Brett Memorial Endowed Fund, and the DTE Foundation. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to Chef Angelo Loria from Vince and Joe's Market. Chef is a graduate of the Macomb Culinary Program and is part of our advisory group at the college. So thank you so much. Take it over, Chef. Hi, everyone. Thanks for uh, joining us today. Uh, as you just heard, my name is Angela Laurie. I'm the executive chef here at Vincent Joe's Gourmet Market. So I guess that puts me as the, uh, the head cook here as well as the head dishwasher. Uh, that's what we, uh, we do here. We all work together. This family Market's uh, been here for nearly 40 years. Uh, we're now we're broadcasting live from our flagship store out in Shelby Town. The one in Clinton Township has been there for nearly 40 years run by family, um, family, uh, family owned, uh, family uh, ownership, extremely involved too. So, and uh, we wanna thank everyone for letting us be a part uh, of your afternoon here. We're gonna try to keep it lively. Uh, if we had uh, ways to, to pass out food, we'd be passing out food right now, but for another time in another place, we'll get you back with some food. Uh, so what we wanted to talk about today, the Vincent Joe's Gourmet Market, um, the history of Italian community in Metro Detroit and the rise of a family market. And by family market, we mean truly a family market. Um, if you're a store manager here, you're, uh, you're related by blood. Uh, and if not, they're gonna probably get some blood from you to make sure that you're gonna stay loyal to, uh, to who we are. Um, but who we are is um, a family owned and operated specialty grocery store uh, in Macomb County. Uh, brothers Vince and Joe Vitale immigrated from Chinese Sicily. Uh, in Chinese uh, Sicily is uh, where the planes fly into. Uh, so if you go to, to ever visit Sicily and you fly into Palermo, you're actually flying into Chinese, into Vince and Joe's actual hometown. Uh, we started the first four, uh, produce market, like I said, nearly 40 years ago, 38 years ago, with a single location, a location in Clinton Township. And then we expanded to a second flagship store uh, in, in Shelby Township in 2006. So it's it's uh, it's been a, a lot of fun here. To uh, there we go. In the in the past four decades, Vincent Joe's has expanded from a small produce and import market to a full service grocery store where you can find fresh baked goods, a meat shop, a seafood store, gourmet prepared foods, and even a pizzeria and a wine bar. So uh, when you go to uh, when you visit European countries, when you're in Italy, uh, if you were to go to a, a town, they wouldn't have a store like this. They would have a place where you go pick up only your baked goods. Uh, they'd have a place where you were a butcher shop where you pick up your meat and people would go there every day and, 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 and in 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 um, the hometown where vincent joe grew up and my mother uh, grew up as well uh the seafood market comes to you uh back in the day they'd load a vespa up with uh, some ice and they'd come around and if they really liked you they'd come around to see you first and if they didn't like you you'd get whatever was left uh at the end of the day when the ice was melted and the fish was swimming uh but um uh, the, the, so we've, we've combined everything, uh, your entire um, Baezi, as we would say, uh, into one, one roof, under one roof, uh, where you've got your pizzeria, wine bar. Uh, we've we've uh, won um, multiple awards for multiple years, 11 years in a row. Uh, we've won um, uh, some sort of best of uh, our Detroit. Last year, we won 11 awards, so we're pretty excited about that. Uh, we hope to continue the, the, the pace this year as well. 
including best chef, I've been told, but um, we'll save that for another day. Uh, so uh, very humbly, uh, 1983, Vincent Joe's opened uh, a store on, on Garfield Road, uh, just to enjoy a family atmosphere at Vincent Joe's. Um, because what was happening by 83, uh, the economy was, was starting to, to pick back up and people were vacationing more. And they were starting to look for the things that were um, uh, that were that were they were finding uh, when they were traveling, but they weren't finding here. Uh, and so the, the the worst thing you can say to uh, a very um, dedicated and very uh, hardworking person is that oh we don't have that. Well, if you don't have that, if you can't get that, I'm going to find where to get it. And so they did. But uh, that's where that's where our story starts. But take you back to when the first Italians uh, uh, in Detroit, uh, the very first Italians started. And it all started with Alphonse Tonti. Uh, in 1701, Antoine de la Mothe Cadillac, uh, known as the father of Detroit, found a trading post uh, and fort along the Detroit River under the name uh, of a French Sun King Louis XIV. Uh, it also makes a great cognac. Uh, from Cadillac's uh, second in command was Alphonse Tonti, uh, son of an Italian immigrant uh, to France, uh, whose real name was Alfonso Tonti. So uh, we. Uh, uh, we we trade uh, we we, uh, we changed the name just to make sure that uh, he sounded French, but in the end he was Italian. Uh, in 1703, the first European child in Detroit was born to Tonti and his wife. Uh, the first wave of Italians, uh, despite the early presence of Italians in Detroit, immigration grew slowly until the first half of the 20th century, fueled by the development of the auto industry. So uh, you know the things were bad in Sicily, uh, things were bad in Italy. And most of the migration, uh, the, that first wave, uh, was from the southern part of Italy and from Sicily. Uh, so they uh, immigrated all over, but southerners were the dominant force. From the mid to early 20th century, the center of the Italian community was just east of downtown along Gratiot and McDougal. And a funny story there uh, about that is that's where the old cargo loop was, where the, where they would, um, the trains would, uh, would, would uh, drop the stuff off and the, the, the passengers would drop off. So the Italians in their broken English ended up calling it Ugago uh, which is the, um, which is, uh, I guess, uh, uh, wolf stuff. Uh, so, you know, so Ugago Lubo. So now to this day, there's a big community in, in, in Florida and they all live in the same condominium complex and they call that the new Cagalubo. So the, the cargo loop um, transformed the Cagalubo has changed and uh, transferred down to Florida and anywhere you see a big group of Italians, especially from that, from that, uh, that era of Detroit, they were able to, um, uh, they're able to just relate back to, you say Cagalubo, people know what you're talking about and they know where they were growing up. Uh, so many Italians moved north into the suburbs of Macomb County and Garfield Road in Clinton Town was named the New Little Italy. Uh, it's cluster, uh, it's a, for its cluster of remaining Italian restaurants and shops. And that's where you'll find the first Vincent Joe's Gourmet Market. And that's when Bonaldi's moved from uh, Eight Mile up, up to uh, right next to Vincent Joe's and they've recently closed. Uh, you've got Luciano's, you've got a, a, quite an influx of Italian restaurants. You had more uh, back in the day. And so that's where we started our first, um, our first gourmet market was uh, over on Garfield and Canal. Now the second wave of the uh, second, uh, the second wave uh, Italian immigration boom started at the end of World War II and lasted throughout the 60s. Uh, many immigrants started working in auto factories, construction sector, or produce. In 1965, Giuseppe Vidali, or Joe Sr., immigrates to Michigan after finishing a two-year uh, with the Italian Army. Uh, and his younger brother, Vince, uh, immigrates to Michigan, begins working as a brick bricklayer, and opens his own, um, his own business. Uh, and then during that same time period, too, my parents uh, came over, and actually they met here. So they traveled all around the world, and they met another on the same island they grew up on. So it, it's a kind of uh, inspiring and, and cute story that uh, as, far, uh, as far as far as you can travel for love, it was probably just 45 minutes away. Uh, so in the 1900s, there are several thousand Italians living in Michigan. By 1990, the Italian population in Michigan grows to 280,000, according to the National Italian uh, Foundation. Uh, in 2020, last year, the population in Michigan, uh, Italian population in Michigan, doubles to about 400, but 451,000, according to uh, the NIAF. But most likely, that's just from the, 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 the there's not influx of Im immigrants coming in. It's just most likely from these Italian um, 
heritage, uh, people with Italian heritage, just saying that they uh, feel identify with um, uh, the Italian culture. So uh, our story begins, uh, we're gonna start our story now from there. So what, uh, what we did is, uh, what the owners did is they recognized the need. Italian community expanding through a new generation and settling in Macomb, uh, where an opportunity presented itself. They were, they, they were used to fresh uh, fruit. Growing up in the cities they grew up in, um, the city they grew up in in, in Sicily, uh, there was no, you know, you always had lemons, limes, oranges, throughout the year, cactus pear, figs. And this stuff was almost non-existent back in the early 80s when they were going for it. It was very tough to come by, uh, tough, uh, tough to come by. You couldn't find that, 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 that fresh produce. You just kind of had that picked over stuff. A lot of canned goods were being sold. Um, the spam was a big hit. I remember that growing up uh, quite a bit. But you couldn't find that uh, that fresh stuff that you would find uh, in a lot of the towns in, in uh, throughout Italy. Oh, and uh, so with that, with that being said, uh, growing up, we had a fig tree planted in our backyard. It wasn't a mobile one we move in. So we'd have a fig tree uh, in our backyard and that had amazing figs, but because figs are the tropical plant, we ended up having to um, insulate and cover it. So we built a fig tree, a, a, a house out of uh, pallets and insulation, shoveled a bunch of dirt on it too. And then every uh, spring we'd, uh, we'd unwrap that whole package and we'd see how wonderful, um, how great of a job. If we didn't do a good job and it, and it froze, that wouldn't be a good year for us because we wouldn't have any figs. But uh, for the most part, we, we kept the fun. Uh, it was, um, and so, so from that need and, and from every, uh, most Italian houses having those, uh, especially stuff in with their peach trees, our apricot trees. Um, but but it, it come to a point in time where these families were growing uh, from soccer to the, the kids activities that were growing it was tough for someone to grow all that at home. So we wanted a place where we could go. Uh, uh, and just like everyone else, uh, not just the Italians, somewhere we can get good fresh produce. Uh, and so the sustainable living, the Italian gastronomy just depends on fresh, seasonal and quality product. And so do us and so do we in the kitchen. So from uh, all the chefs that uh, work here, all the pastry chefs, uh, we want the best ingredients. We don't want second class uh, ingredients. We don't want things uh, that we wouldn't serve our family and we wouldn't serve our, our our guests or our public as well. And so that, that's an uh, important thing for us too. Um, when it comes to talking about what we wanted to bring in uh, to the store. Uh, so uh, in, in Europe, it is illegal. In Italy, it is illegal to, to, to sell produce that's been uh, genetically modified. And we'll go into that a little bit later. But if you have watermelons, it has seeds in it. Uh, if you have uh, grapes, they have seeds in it. If you have oranges, guess what? More seeds in it. Uh, but uh, that way they know that the, everything is into this day, it's the same way. That way it's, it's natural from, from the way that it was started from back in the beginning. And so satisfied customers. Um, so uh, we're Italian immigrants led, food imports followed. And, and not just for the Italian community, but for the entire Detroit community. So whenever possible, uh, Vince and Joe, we buy from local farmers, many uh, from Northern Macomb County. And we even have an explosive uh, organic farm with the Martin family farm in Armada. Uh, he supplies our, um, Organic vegetables in the summer, every weekday, uh, a team heads to Detroit Produce uh, Terminal. And then by a team, I mean, uh, so Joe used to do it. And so uh, Joe's gotten to the age where he should enjoy life a little more, but he comes to the stores uh, where his son Gasper wakes up at, I think, 1230 in the morning to get there by two o'clock to get the first choice of all the produce uh, that, that comes into the stores. Uh, if Gasper doesn't tag it, it doesn't come to the store. So he, he, he looked at every single, um, a piece of item in produce that comes in from our fruits to our vegetables, uh, to even our nuts, the bananas, all that sort of stuff. Gasper, did, Gasper himself picks out. And so it's, it's kind of awesome to see uh, that kind of dedication to the ownership too. And you don't want to disappoint them and you don't want to burn something or overcook something. And they don't want to bring in stuff that's garbage uh, to serve to their family because uh, for two reasons that Gasper wants to make sure he brings in the best stuff. Uh, the first reason, pride. Uh, the, the pride of his family, his, uh, his father's name's on the store, and Gasper, uh, and with the help of Salvo as well, uh, want to make sure that uh, that they have the best, high, highest quality product. Uh, and the second reason why Gasper makes sure he has the best stuff in here, because if he doesn't, uh, he's going to have to reckon with his aunt. And his aunt is, uh, is, uh, is Aunt Mima, uh, and Maria as well, but his Aunt Mima is uh, 
is the passion behind it, is the fire behind what we do here and, and, uh, and the way that we're um, uh, leading uh, what we do in the store. So uh, her passion is very uh, catching. Uh, she's passionate about what she does and, and, and she'll let you know if you're doing a good job or not. And so having an owner like that, it's uh, when you know you're doing a good job is, is great for us. If you know you're doing a bad job, it's, it's really, really a bad day for you and your, uh, and your team. So we, uh, the team goes on and pick up the fruits and vegetables and it comes in from all over. Uh, Martin Family Farms uh, in Armada, he grows, uh, it's called the Lola Rosa, um, uh, the Regina uh, eggplant, it's a Sicilian eggplant. It's a light purple one. He grows it organic and we're the only store in, in Metro Detroit here to have an organic uh, uh, Sicilian eggplant. He grows them just for us and for his co-op, uh, but uh, it's great. And, and, and we went out there and visited him a couple years ago and we'd like to, like to talk to him. And the one reason he started his organic farm uh, up there was uh, he said he, he moved over from um, back home from Kentucky. And he said, if I'm going to go back, I don't want to go back into construction. I want to be a farmer. Uh, and then he saw his daughter eat a tomato off a tomato plant. And he said, I never want anything bad on these plants. And that's why he started his organic farm. And, and with, with, a, with seeing how he runs his farm and how clean it is, and how he cares so much about the food that he serves people and then brings in here to our store. Um, we, we were, we're so happy to partner with uh, Martin Family Farms in Armada. All right, so um, we were the first to import uh, curated specialty items from Italy. Uh, now, back in the day, you could, uh, there was Parmesan uh, available pre graded. Uh, we call that kitty litter. It's that craft stuff you find on the on the shelves. Uh, and not saying that nothing nothing to disparage uh, uh, what they do at craft, but um, there's a lot of filler in there too. Where our Parmesan cheese that we serve, uh, that we that we sell to our customers is just 100% Parmesan cheese. There's no filler. There's no additive. There's no preservative in it. Uh, you know, if you have it sit in your fridge for three weeks, guess what? There might be mold on it because that's just what it, that's what cheese does. It gets moldy when it doesn't. Um, uh, when it when it doesn't get used. So if you have moldy Parmesan cheese uh, in your fridge, my word of advice to you is eat cheese faster, please. Parmesan cheese, we have big meals right here coming in. Right back here. Uh, to lift that up was kind of difficult to get it down. It's going to be even harder. Uh, so it's about a 90 pound wheel. Uh, we cut it fresh uh, to order. Um, we have uh, we have blocks that we cut, but when we cut it, we don't use uh, heat. So we don't want to affect the quality of the taste of it. Uh, we, we cut it and then sometimes you see they're kind of misshapen or they're kind of uh, jaggedy. That's because we just kind of break it off and then cut the triangles that we cut with it. Uh, it's straight grown olive oil. That's up here behind me as well. Uh, so we get it from Alcamo Sicily. The owners um, visit, uh, visit Sicily quite a bit uh, because they uh, grew up there and saw a lot of their family there too. So what, what uh, they did is they found the olive oil grove that they liked. And so just like with wine, uh, this bottle right here was... Um, Handpicked by the by a certain a few rows in the um, uh, in the in the in the farm uh, in the orchard in the uh, olive orchard they actually um, the olive grows I should say uh, they they picked the the olives they they taste the olive oil after they taste the olive oil they approve they have our label put on it so this isn't just something that you you know uh, you can't get this anywhere else this is exclusive here to Vincent Joe's uh, it was harvested by twenty and when the twenty twenty is gone. You gotta wait till next year and they don't start harvesting until the fall here uh, over there. And so with the stuff like that is important to us, uh, just uh, on the quality of it. Uh, the, when we, that, we get that olive oil in, the owner gets a few cases, buys a few cases for, for themselves and they bring it and they bring it home. And that's what they serve. Uh, that, that's what they serve their family. That's what they use at home. Next thing is arancini. Arancini are, um, uh, lovely. If I'm making everyone hungry. It's dinner time almost. We got plenty of arancini in our counter here, so come on in. Uh, so arancini are uh, that's the Italian word for little orange. Uh, these, these are kind of big oranges. They're kind of right, the right size orange. Uh, we have five different flavors that we use, but arancini is another thing that we help introduce to the community and make it more readily available uh, to the community. Now, now everyone back in the day, everyone's mom would make arancini, uh, but then people and then they have to make their own arancini, so they were looking for authentic outlets uh, to arancini, uh, and so it was. Uh, we help we help with that authentic recipes, arborio rice, uh, everything that it's a kind of a global local market. So 
so it's a, it's a global market where we get the authentic products from Italy, um, but we sell it here locally to you. So you don't have to travel to Italy to get the authentic thing. Uh, authentic grocery items. Uh, one one that I, that I think everyone is familiar with is the, uh, is the, the wonderful uh, thing that I would, would always get teased for when I'd go to um, uh, lunch at, during elementary school and in junior high, as I'd bring a, what looked like a chocolate sandwich. It was actually a Nutella sandwich. Um, Nutella, uh, my kids, I give it to my kids. It's a, not every day, uh, they love it every day, but Nutella in the glass jar is actually imported from Italy. The plastic jar is, is made here. Uh, I think it's in Canada that it's made and it's a little different, uh, but this stuff, right, the, the one from Italy is the higher concentrate of uh, hazelnut in it. Um, it's delicious. They're both good. Uh, they're both, and it's, uh, they're both good for you, right? It's chocolate and hazelnuts, it's everything you need. Um, and so, so looking for authentic grocery items uh, like that. So you get that same sort of uh, feel like you would in, in Europe. Uh, like uh, in, in Italy, they're very strict on what you can put into your products. Uh, high fructose corn syrup is, is, is not allowed. Um, That's why they're, they're grains uh, from, the, from the flour uh, to what they use. It has to be the, the authentic stuff. Uh, and then also um, Barilla pasta. Uh, the, now the Barilla pasta that you see in the store uh, the Barilla pasta you see in the store in those dark blue uh, containers is Barilla pasta from Wisconsin. Uh, so it might say Colecion or whatever, but it's it's uh, it's made so it's with the U.S. regulations and the U.S. flour, you know, the, the local flour. Uh, we're now importing uh, pasta that's made in uh, Italy uh, from here, uh, from Barilla. Plus we have other De Checo and other brands that we, we get from Italy. Uh, but uh, but the having the burilla from uh, from the, or from Italy, it makes for a great 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 uh, uh, pasta. A different flavor profile too. And and I know people who have some um, gluten tolerances, not necessarily celiac disease, but gluten intolerances, might not be able to have the domestic pasta. some of the stuff that we import from Italy. It actually is um, it actually works out for them uh, where the, where they don't have uh, any reaction at all. Using the stuff that we do, that we uh, import in from Italy, uh, we have gelato uh, made with ingredients from from Italy, and right here again, these smell great, look great. Me and uh, Marina, who's over here, we're gonna knock out all ten of them. She's gonna have seven, I'll have three. She's pregnant, she's eating for two. Mm -hmm. uh, so, um, but this right here is made with go the, the shells are authentic shells. Uh, the same way you would find it. In a um, in a cafe or, a, or in a, a pastry shop in Italy, uh, you'd, you'd, in Sicily especially you'd find those. So those are some of the some of the unique items we have here, and and, uh, and our panettone uh, is another great one as well. Marina is a lifesaver here. Also uh, our house made sauces, our house made sauces, and this is this right here is something that uh, we make from scratch. These are authentic recipes from the owner that we've been making for years. Um, now with our sauces, uh, they they support Hope Network. Hope Network is a is a uh, is an organization that supports families with autistic children uh, with, through occupational uh, therapy and just helping the families out for support. Uh, so um, Joe's granddaughter Emma uh, is and is a um, is autistic, and uh, Joe a few years ago came to us and, and said we do a lot for St. Jude's and that's wonderful. We do a lot for the community. That's wonderful. He goes, I want to do something for my granddaughter. Uh, and he started crying. Uh, so so uh, he was so moved. Uh, we were so moved by that. We found this Hope, or Hope Network organization. We've partnered with them. Uh, my favorite line, Detroit line of all time, Eddie Murray is, is the local representative here. And, and our hard work uh, and all of the proceeds from all sales of all of our sauces uh, goes towards Hope Network. We've given um, over twenty thousand dollars in the past few years, uh, and was something that we're very, very proud of, of um, giving back to the community when we can and doing, uh, and doing good. <laughs> and then our, our baguettes too. Uh, baguettes uh, during um, uh, during October, uh, we do the, the bread, the staff of life. That's another. That's another way we can give back to St. Jude's uh, as well. Uh, we uh, have um, good uh, community outreach. We want to feel a part of the community. A lot of times, uh, shopping, you want to go in and out too. Um, for us, we like to have you here. We kind of like to have you hang out here for a while. Uh, we like to have you hang out here for a while and just talk about, uh, you'll, you'll see customers and it's family. 
uh, you know, it's back in the Brady Bunch days when the when um, you know you Al the butcher ended up marrying you know uh, Alice. But what we enjoy most is our customers, and without our wonderful customers and the new or old, um, we wouldn't have this community that we have right here. And I spoke of gelato, and again, this is um, uh, absolutely delicious. This is a uh, this is hazelnut. You can tell by the hazelnuts on it. Uh, this is delicious. And, and, and we're going to give, we're going to talk about a great opportunity at the end of this uh, whole uh, talk about how you can get some of these products yourself. Um, but this looks so good. My mouth is watering. Is there, no, no, I'm good. I'm good. Uh, so our motto here is taste is a matter of choice. Quality is a matter of fact. Um, we've, uh, we've been known to receive products uh, that, that we were promised one thing, we'll get something else. And return a product back, we'd rather be out of something than to, than to serve, uh, than, to, than to put our wrong foot forward and to serve something that, that people just wouldn't think would be, uh, that we wouldn't eat ourselves. So it's just a matter of fact quality. There's no, there's no other option. All right, so I was talking about a great uh, way to, to, to give back. Uh, for our participants here, um, here's a way to treat you. Enjoy a $10 gift card to Vincent Joe's Gourmet Market. And the way to redeem that is to present this ad to a customer service at Clinton, at a Clinton Township location. Uh, provide the email address uh, used to register for the Deliciously Michigan presentation. And they will provide you with a gift card. Uh, you need to come between April 14th uh, and May 14th, 2021. Gift card must be picked up at the Clinton Township location. Uh, but it can be spent at either location. I uh, limit one gift card per participant. I've got uh, 94 of my family actually logged in now. So we're going to have a pretty good, uh, good spending spree over here, everyone. Uh, with that being said, we'd like to open it up to any questions that you might have for us. <clears throat> Thank you so much, Chef. That was awesome. That was a great presentation. <clears throat> we do have a few questions in the chat. Um, the first one is, do you have any homemade ravioli to go with your homemade sauces? Uh, great question, and it's yes. And we were always trying to expand our ravioli line. We just brought in a, um, <laughs> uh, we're making a caprese uh, ravioli. So it's fresh mozzarella, oven roasted tomatoes, uh, some wonderful uh, pesto inside there too. It would go great with any of our sauces. But yeah, we have uh, an assortment from our portobello mushroom uh, to our butternut squash. To our cheese, to our meat, oh, there we go. and to uh, any of the, uh, and to anything else that we uh, get creative in. And, and um, Cindy is asking, how can I learn to cook with figs? How can you learn to cook with figs? Uh, well, as soon as, um, as soon as we're able to uh, get in person here again, we do host cooking classes here as well. Uh, but we also have recipes online, uh, vincentjoes.com, and we have a few of them with figs on it as well. And if we don't, we're going to incorporate some. Uh, figs to me are absolutely delicious. It, it, it reminds me of you, right? Food uh, is all about the memories that it makes too. So you could have uh, the best meal we had in, in Florence. My wife and I went there on, on vacation was a, bottle, a, three dollar, a three euro bottle of wine, uh, a, a fresh a fresh piece of bread, uh, some cheese and some... Um, and some prosciutto that we had. We went up to the uh, the David statue at the top of the uh, the mountain, and we just sat there and ate it, overlooking the whole city, watching the sunset too. So, food should bring back memories. Figs for me bring back my youth. Uh, and been living at home and then carving that, that darn tree up, to make sure it didn't get any frostbite. But uh, but and, that, and that's what food should do. Um, not every day, but you have something special. You taste it. It's a taste of something, whether it's an olive oil, whether it's a fig. Whether it's a tomato, uh, it just reminds you of something, whether it's summer uh, or growing up. And are there any plans to expand the Garfield store? It's always busy and the parking is a challenge. Uh, parking is, uh, is, is our number. We'd have a perfect uh, five-star Yelp rating if it wasn't for our parking, everyone. But uh, we, um, we, uh, we are expanding in the process of expanding the uh, Garfield store. That should be completed by the fall. We're adding a uh, pizza, we have a fresh, uh, fresh made pizzas. We're expanding our, our, our gourmet island a little bit, expanding the, the meat department, expanding our groceries. So yes, we're gonna be expanding the, the Clinton Township store. Uh, and it should be open this fall. Take care for her because she's always- Nice. In her hair. That's awesome. Um, <clears throat> there's a, a few things in the chat um, about the, the gift card. 
So after the presentation, you'll receive an email to email address that you use to register for the program. And in that email will be the ad and the instructions for how to redeem your gift card. <clears throat> so you just look for that. And also in the chat, um, Carrie put the link for Vince and Joe's for their recipes so that you can look up some recipes. Um, we have another question from Nina. It says, do you have many vegan options? Well, and then that, that for us is the, the, the plant-based options are the, is the fastest growing uh, segment that we're, that we're seeing in, in the, especially in the culinary world. Uh, and so what we're doing with uh, vegan options, yes. We do have vegan options too. We, we have uh, in, uh, uh, that's a bowl for you. We don't put it out, but you just come in and ask for it. We have a vegan power bowl that's uh, got quinoa and beets and uh, lemony uh, chickpeas and roasted cauliflower, roasted carrots and roasted sweet potatoes. Uh, it's absolutely delicious. It's uh, it's enough for a at least a couple people. Uh, we have a gluten free uh, tomato basil, uh, you know, vegan uh, tomato basil sauce uh, as well. And many of our products are vegan. Just come on in, ask for myself. Uh, I'm at the store uh, quite a bit, or just ask one of the, the knowledgeable um, uh, service workers that we have out there, and they'll be able to let you know which which uh, uh, which are vegan and which aren't. And what's the name of the olive oil that you talked about? So the name of the olive oil. Uh, our own private label. It's our Vincent Joe's uh, extra virgin olive oil. Uh, the harvested in 2020. You'll see it. Uh, you'll see it until you don't. So we'll, we'll carry it until we're out, and then when we're out, we'll see it again next year. And and then we have one other comment that they would like to um, see more dairy-free options. And and, and to, we're we're working on uh, on that as well. And we're trying to say with dairy free, we're trying to stay away from uh, soy as well too. So we cook with olive oil. Uh, being Italian, if I don't eat enough olive oil, consume enough olive oil through the day, my skin really dries out. So I got to make sure I replenish my olive oil supplement that uh, that uh, that we have uh, throughout the day. And do you have heart healthy, low fat re recipes and options? We we do. We uh, we uh, again when 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 times were different, uh, we had. Um, uh, fresh start class where we'd have a class open to the community once a month uh, on a Thursday it was and we'd have a dietitian from um, uh, uh, from Ascension uh, Ascension St. John's and she'd come in and then we'd, and we'd talk about Suzanne and uh, I, heart, so heart health recipes uh, and it was uh, we'd talk about ways of making better food choices too because we're all human and we want to eat good food but good food but the healthy food doesn't have to be bad food it doesn't have to taste like garbage you can you can still make uh, healthy food be good. So uh, we 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 do have that, and and uh, we uh, we do post quite a bit on our fresh start uh, recipes, and those recipes are available at vincentjoes.com. And you know what? This is probably my my question from today because I have the same question: Is it safe to eat the rind part off of the cheese? It's it's uh, plenty safe to eat it, but usually we don't. People prefer not to. What we end up doing with that is we'll end up, um, uh, people want to use it for their Alfredo sauce. So they'll end up putting it in the Alfredo sauce. Uh, we sell it at a discounted rate. We just sell the rind for it. Uh, but you can use it for there. I wouldn't recommend eating it. It's just been, you know, it's a little, a little too uh, a little too chewy for my taste, but it goes great for when you, it's like almost like a, a soup bone. Uh, just throwing that into to like a, a sauce, throwing it into a minestrone. And you get this great flavor, this umami flavor coming from the Parmesan rind. Nice. Um, do you have cooking classes online? We do. Do we? We have offered them in the past, and uh, we, we right now we're doing a lot of um, uh, private organizations. Uh, we had the Macomb uh, Bar, the Macomb Bar Association, uh, last month, I believe. Uh, we did a private cooking class with them. We had uh, 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 some security groups uh, did it, but yeah, we, we'd be more than happy uh, to do them up uh, online here soon. We're scheduled to have a kids cooking camp in June. Hopefully things um, trend a little better than they're trending right now out in the community, but uh, we'll have a kids cooking camp too. And the kids cooking camp is three days, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, right when kids get out of school, uh, the week week after they're done. And, and they'll in, they're in here and they're actually cooking. We kick the parents out because parents, no offense, and my kids are the same way. Your kids are much better without you uh, around. They act, they act better, they listen better. And it's um, quite amazing what they can do. Uh, we have them do everything from make pasta. Uh, we, 
we give them a knife to uh, to break down a chicken, supervise everyone. It's very, very supervised, but they're breaking down a whole chicken. And so parents will come in and be amazed that they don't even know how to do it. And now their kid um, uh, just learned how to break down a chicken with a knife under supervision. So. Um, we have another question too. And, and again, very good question. How much water do you use to cook pasta? Like, how do you gauge it? Uh, so you want your pasta to be in there uh, uh, to, to swim quite a bit. So I usually go five or six to, to, to one. So you want to make sure that you, that it's not low. If you got a pot of water, you know, make sure if you're doing a pound, you want to make sure it's, uh, you know, at least a gallon in there. You want to make sure that the, that the naturalness of, of the water uh, boiling and then the pasta just kind of working with it, dancing with each other per se, is what you want. We use a lot of water when we, we cook our pasta because the less water you have, the more likely it is to stick. Uh, the, the it just it just doesn't, it's not a good uh, outcome for, for what you want to do. So lots of water, and it should taste like uh, it should taste like the sea, or the ocean. It shouldn't taste like the lake. All right, I think that's about all the questions we have. Um, I, I'm just going to remind everybody again: in order to get the coupon, you're going to be getting a, an email, and the coupon will be in your email, and you can um, click from there, and you can get the instructions for how to redeem your gift card. So um, I, I'm just going to thank you so much again, um, Chef Angelo Loria and Marina and Vincent Joe's Gourmet Market. And thanks to everybody for attending. Have an awesome weekend and we'll see you right back here next week. Bye-bye, everybody. Thank you, everyone.